Brought to you by 1AAuto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. I hope this how-to video helps you out. And next time you need parts for your vehicle, think of 1AAuto.com. Thanks. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the front brakes on this 2005 uh, Chevy Silverado. This truck is a 4x4 uh, with the drum rear bra brakes. There are some differences in the brakes as far as uh, the calipers and the rotors they use, but generally the procedure for redoing the brakes um, is the same for pretty much any 99 to present, actually to 2013 or so. Um, Silverado, Sierra, even the Cadillac Escalade, Yukon, uh, Suburban, Yukon XL. Um, gen generally the procedure is the same for all these trucks. The tools may differ in size a little bit, but what I used for this truck are jack and jack stands. You'll need your lug wrench or a 22, 22 millimeter socket with a breaker bar or something else that you can get some good leverage on. 18 and 19 millimeter sockets with a ratchet. Uh, again, you'll need a breaker bar or a pipe for some extra leverage on some of those bolts. A uh, small wire brush to clean things up as you put them together. A large C-clamp. A large hammer. I use the big hammer, big sledgehammer to get my rotor off. You can also use, I believe it's an M12 17 millimeter bolts that you can thread into the rotors and kind of press them off. Uh, I just use the big hammer method. Cold chisel, I have that starred because on this vehicle, um, t a couple of my slides, my lower slides were in rough shape, so I had to kind of pound them out. You'll see what I mean. You may not have that issue on your vehicle. Uh, and then you'll need a torque wrench to get everything back together. Okay, start out by removing the wheel and tire. Uh, if you don't have the benefit of air tools, you'll want to start with uh, the vehicle on the ground, loosen, take off the hub cap, the center cap, loosen the lug nuts then raise and support the vehicle, remove the lug nuts all the way, and remove the wheel and tire. Turn by hand or use your steering wheel to turn the brakes so you can get to them easily. Okay, now you can inspect the brakes um, with the wheel off, and you can see my brakes are in pretty rough shape. The rotors show that there's only about 30% um, of the contact pad actually uh, working. The pads are worn, so we're going to remove two 19 millimeter bolts to remove the caliper. Okay, these 19 millimeter bolts should come off pretty easy. You see, I'm just reg using regular hand tools, and they come right off. I'll fast forward here a little bit as I just take those bolts out. And now you're going to remove the caliper just by lifting up. Uh, you may want to use a large screwdriver and pry out on the cal caliper a little bit. That'll help loosen things up. And then the pads should come out fairly easily. See my back one comes out and then I struggle with the um, the front one or the the outside one. The inside one came out. I struggle with the outside one. Um, then I look for something to pry it with and just end up using uh, the back pad and pry that other pad right out. Okay, you want to make sure these slide in and out really easily, and that one does. And this one is totally frozen up from what I can see. Okay, it's so bad, I'm actually going to take my impact. Okay, so I use my impact wrench to get it moving. You can use a, a ratchet and socket 19 millimeter work as well. Um, get it turning and then you can use a hammer uh, and some type of punch and you'll see in the next scene to get it out the rest of the way. Okay, so just using a uh, punch, or actually it's a cold chisel, to get that out of there. What I do, pull it out, clean it all up, put some grease on it, push it back in, and basically go in and out with it a bunch of times. Just keep cleaning it off. Uh, use a pick or something to try and clean out inside the hole, and you can get it freed up. Um, if you're not happy with that, you can also order a new set of the caliper brackets from 1A Auto, as well as the slide pins. Okay, now there's a set of stainless steel slides, and you pull those off, and we're going to wire brush those and clean them up a little bit later. And now we're going to remove the uh, caliper bracket, and there's two 18 millimeter bolts 
There's one right there and one there. These will be tighter. You'll need a little more leverage to get them off. So you can see here I'm going to put the 18 millimeter socket on there, put my ratchet on, and then use a piece of pipe to basically extend the length of the ratchet, give me some more uh, leverage, and just pull nice and evenly, and they end up coming loose. And you can use, um, if you have a breaker bar, that's good, or um, if you have the benefit of air tools, uh, obviously that's the way to go. Um, but these come off usually with a little extra leverage. And I'm just going to fast forward here as I remove them the rest of the way. Okay, here I've just threaded the lug nuts on a few threads. That's just to protect the wheel studs. Make sure you, when you're hitting it with the hammer, you don't damage the threads on the wheel studs. And basically I'm showing you if you want to um, keep your old uh, disc, you want to hit the front first, that loosens it up, and then you can hit it from the back side lighter and it comes off as you can see it coming off. I actually know I'm going to uh, junk this disc because it's in pretty rough shape. And then also you can see that the uh, lug nuts being threaded on there help you as you're uh, hitting it off. They'll make sure that the disc doesn't go flying and hurt somebody. Okay, and here I've removed the lug nuts so I can take the old uh, rotor off. And then I've got the new rotor from 1A Auto ready to go back on. It's going to go on there just the same as the original. Obviously in much better shape. Um, provide much greater braking surface area than that old one did. And here I'm just using a wire brush. I want to clean up um, the slots where those stainless steel slides go in as well as where the brake shoes go in. Um, just clean those up, get the rust and scale out of there so everything fits together well. Okay, and I'm actually going to speed it up here as I put the bracket back in place and start the bolts in, and I'm just going to tighten them preliminarily. I'm actually going to, next scene, I'll tighten them up with a torque wrench to between 90 and 95 foot-pounds. Okay, here are my stainless steel slides that I've cleaned up um, with a wire brush and sometimes the uh, brake pads will come with new uh, slides. Just make sure you install those correctly and they get seated right down into um, the caliper bracket. New brake shoes from 1A Auto. There is a, a front and a rear. Um, the rear has the larger metal backing uh, and you want to put the squeak tab, a little tab, put that down lower, okay, and they should slide right in. Okay, now you want to take your old inner pad and put it into the caliper and then put your, use a large C-clamp and you're basically resetting the caliper. Uh, you can see as I tighten up the C-clamp, the pistons in the caliper um, go back in and reset. I just slowly um, tighten up that C-clamp and push the pistons back into the caliper. Okay, uh, remember back when we uh, checked those slides and the one was stuck. Now here's where you can figure out how well you did as far as cleaning them out. Um, you'll have to take the caliper, push it against the slides on the inside a little bit, and then get it to come down over uh, the brake pads. That should go right on. And I'm going to fast forward here as I just put those uh, 19 millimeter bolts back in that hold the caliper to uh, the caliper slides. Okay, and now you want to torque these to uh, between 55 and 60 foot-pounds. And now I'm just going to fast forward and straighten out the wheels. Um, put the wheel and tire back on, 
put the lug nuts all on. I always always f thread the first few turns by hand, make sure you get the lug nut going on there correctly, and then just kind of tighten them preliminarily. Okay, here I'm torquing the lug nuts on the wheel. Uh, always do your brakes in pairs. Um, I'm just going to show you the passenger side, but obviously the next thing I do is the driver's side. And then after you torque the lug nuts, when you torque the lug nuts, make sure you do it in a crossing pattern. Torque one, then go across the wheel to the next one. Um, put the cap and all the trim back on the wheel. And then there's one more step. Okay, after you do brake work, make sure you pump the brakes a few times. Make a nice, hard, solid pedal. We hope this helps you out. Brought to you by www.1aauto.com, your source for quality replacement parts and the best service on the internet. Please feel free to call us toll-free, 888-844-3393. We're the company that's here for you on the internet and in person.